Welcome to this WiseL Excel VBA tutorial. In this part of our series on writing SQL for Excel files, we're going to look at how to join worksheets from multiple files. We'll start with a quick recap of how to join sheets that exist in the same workbook, and then look at how to use the IN clause to refer to multiple different files in the same select statement. We'll use that to create a derived table subquery, and then explain how to join the results of the subquery to the rest of the select statement and we'll carry on doing that to join multiple files in the same query to build up our final example. So let's get started. If you've been following along with this series so far, you'll be fairly familiar with the basic setup by now, although there is a slight difference in this video as we'll be selecting from multiple different Excel files rather than just the single movies workbook we normally use. The basics are still the same though, we've got a macro enabled file which allows us to run a query by clicking on this button. This is set up at the moment to select only from the Movies 2010 workbook, which contains a single worksheet called Genres 2010, with a list of film genres, and then some aggregates such as sums and averages for various values related to those films. We then have a similar workbook for the year 2011 and for 2012, and for several other years as well, all stored in separate files in the same folder. I'll drop a link in the video description so that you can download all these files so you can follow along with writing the code with me if you'd like to. A lot of the code that's in the Join Worksheets workbook relies heavily on Microsoft ActiveX data objects, which I'm not going to talk about much in this video. We've covered that in a previous playlist, and if you're interested in that side of things, then I'd point you to this playlist, Excel VBA Working with Databases. Again, I'll drop a link in the video description so you can get to this quickly enough. And I'd start with this video here, how do I get data from a closed Excel file using VBA? Just to demonstrate the basics of the code working, if I head back to the Visual Basic Editor, when I click the Run Query button, it triggers a subroutine called Create SQL Query. And the only job of this subroutine is to construct the string representing the query that we're eventually going to run. When we've done that, we pass it into a separate subroutine called Get Query Results. And this is the one that deals with all the complicated stuff, such as establishing a connection to a workbook. So here you can see we're connecting just to the Movies 2010 workbook. And then the rest of the code creates the connection, generates a record set and populates that using our query. So that's where our SQL select statement gets used. And then the rest of the code deals with writing that information out into a new worksheet in this workbook. So just to demonstrate that that all works, if I head back to the menu sheet in the Join Worksheets workbook, click the Run Query button, we extract three columns from the Movies 2010 workbook. What I'd like to do next is select the total runtime and average runtime columns from the Movies 2011 workbook and show those columns side by side with the data for 2010. I just want to start with a quick reminder of what that would look like if the Genres 2011 worksheet was in the same workbook as the Genres 2010 worksheet. So let's head back to the Visual Basic Editor and then let's extend our FROM clause to join the Genres 2011 worksheet. So I can concatenate a continuation character, first of all, and then we're going to use an inner join. It's the same list of genres on each sheet, so we don't need to use out joins in any way. So we can say inner join, and then let's just do a quick bit of copying and pasting to avoid having to type in too much. So we'll say genres 2011, we'll give that an alias as G11, and then we'd say which columns those tables or those, uh, those sheets were joined on. So I'd say on G10 dot genre, so we're joining on the genre name, is equal to G11 dot genre. What I could then do is select the appropriate columns in my select list. So again, let's do a quick bit of copying and pasting. There's only a little bit we need to update here. So we're going to select from the, um, the G11 sheet and we'll label these columns as total runtime 2011 and average runtime 2011. So should both sheets be in the same workbook, that is how we could select from both sheets in the single query. Now, of course, we know that this isn't going to work because these two worksheets belong to different workbooks and our connection string only connects to the Movies 2010 file. So what we're going to do to solve this problem is not just refer to the sheet name, genres 2011, followed by a dollar sign, we're going to nest an entire select statement inside this join to select all the data from that sheet in a separate file. So we're going to create a derived table subquery using the in clause to specify that this data comes from a separate file. 
there's quite a lot to tidy up here. This line is going to get quite long, so I'm actually going to split this join into separate lines. Everything from the as keyword onwards will remain the same. So what I'm going to do to start with is close some double quotes there and then concatenate a continuation character, take the as part down to the next line, indent that one space with a tab and then open up some more double quotes. What I'm then going to do is select from the genre 2011 worksheet. So this is the point I'm going to begin my subquery. To begin a subquery, I need to wrap it up in some round brackets. So after the inner join, I'm going to open some round brackets and then just say select star or asterisk from genres 2011. We haven't used the asterisk much in previous videos. The asterisk simply means select all columns from whichever table you reference. It's usually better to refer precisely to the columns you want to select because you can't always guarantee what you're going to get if you just say give me everything. But in this case it works quite nicely. I want all the columns from that worksheet in that workbook. What I now need to do is say which file that table is in. So I'm going to add another new line into my query, so I'm going to add another new line, open and close some double quotes, and then just concatenate the continuation character, just so I don't forget to do that later. Then I'm going to use the in clause. You may remember this from a previous video where we were using a union query to union select tables from different workbooks. Here we can use the basic same technique. Just in case you don't remember from the previous video what we need to specify in the in clause, in separate sets of single quotes, we need to refer to the file path containing the data or the worksheet, and then the file type followed by a semicolon. So here we could type in the full path to the movie's 2011 workbook, but it's far more convenient to concatenate this just as we did for the file path for the movie's 2010 workbook down here. So what I'm going to do at this point, I'm just gonna copy and paste this workbook.path followed by the ampersand and the backslash movies2010.xlsx. I'm then going to head back up to where I've written in a file path and I'll need to then close some double quotes after the in and the open single quotes and then concatenate and then paste in what I've just copied. And then that will construct the full path to the movies 2011 workbook when I update the file name. Next, I need to modify the file type. And again, rather than typing that in from scratch, what we can do is head down to the connection string property in the get query results subroutine, because we've already specified what type of file we're connecting to in the extended properties section in here. So I'm just going to copy and paste the Excel 12.0 XML, head back up to my main routine and then replace the file type placeholder with Excel 12 XML. Then we have the closed, uh, the semicolon character, then the closed single quote character. Finally, I just need to close the open round brackets that I opened over here to indicate that that is the complete subquery. So everything there is a full complete select statement to select everything from that worksheet in that workbook. Then we assign an alias to it as G11 and specify the on clause in the same way we ordinarily would. So having done all of that, if we head back to the menu sheet and we run that query again, we'll see that we get our extra two columns just as we'd expect were the two worksheets in the same file. Now that you know how to join in one additional workbook, it's incredibly easy to join in even more. So let's head back to the Visual Basic Editor and we'll join in the Movies 2012 workbook and the Genres 2012 sheet. I'm going to start by copying and pasting the entire inner join and derived table subquery structure from the previous lines and then paste those in at the end. As you'll know if you've watched previous videos and joined multiple tables using ADO SQL, you must make sure that you wrap up in some round brackets each pair of joins or each pair of tables that you're joining together. So the first two tables we joined, genres 2010, and then all of this to reference genres 2011, needs to be wrapped up in a set of round brackets before we can join in the next thing. Then we can just go about uh, modifying the name of the sheet. So it's not genres 2011, it's genres 2012, and it's in the movies 2012 workbook. 
we'll give it a different alias. Guess what? G12. And then the column name here or the, the table name, the table alias should be G12 as well. We could then just copy and paste the columns we're selecting and update the aliases in the same way. So let's just copy and paste the G11 columns. We'll change those to reference G12 and give those different aliases as well. OK, so having done that, we could head back to the menu sheet again, click the Run Query button, and we get another two columns from another Excel file. If you find yourself joining lots of different worksheets from different files in this way, one thing you may need to be careful of is running out of continuation characters. As you may already know, in VBA there's a limit of 25 continuations in a single statement. So you may find it beneficial to split this select statement up into two or even more different parts. So let's take the select list and the from clause and put those into two separate statements. So at the end of the select list, I'm going to take away the ampersand and the continuation character, take that down a couple of lines, outdent that a little bit. And then I'm going to say SQL query equals SQL query and the from clause. So concatenate to the end of what's already in that query or in that variable, the next part of the, uh, the query. Then let's include the movies 2013 workbook. We don't have that one open yet, but we've got uh, all the way up to the year 2016. I'm not going to do all of them, but one more just to demonstrate the principle. So we'll include the movies 2013 file. So I'm going to copy everything from the previous join or the last join that we wrote and then paste that in at the end of the existing joins. Before I go any further, I'm going to make sure that I wrap up the previous working set of joins in a new set of round brackets. So just at the beginning of the from clause, and then at the end of the previous join, wrap a new set of round brackets around all of that. And then we can just happily update the file name and the worksheet name to 2013, and the table aliases as well. And then we can copy and paste the final two columns in our select list as well. Once again, we'll just update the numbers to 13. And having done all that, we could head back to the menu sheet, run the query again, and get yet another set of data from another Excel workbook. So there you go. There's the basics of joining tables from multiple different Excel files. Hope you found that one useful. Thanks very much for watching as always. We'll see you next time.